Okay, uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, we'll get into our next topic here, which is very interesting and very, very important. Um, we will talk about praying in the spirit. Okay, but before we get into this, uh, we realized that the volume, there was some issue with the audio for the online students. We couldn't hear you here in um, the classroom. So if there are any questions we missed out, then please do uh, tell us. Uh, if not, I'll, I'll just proceed. Fine then, uh, we'll go ahead. So prayer in the spirit. Uh, in the class today, we will look at some of the main um, benefits of praying in the Holy Spirit or in other words, praying in tongues. But there is a book, uh, a publication known as The Wonderful Benefits of Speaking in Tongues, APC publication. So you can just go online and get a PDF uh, copy of that from our um, you know, books section, or we have a library here. Those who want to pick up a hard copy can also do that. And you can actually study through regarding uh, speaking in tongues and how it is very useful for us. Uh, now, when we term in the spirit, right? when we use the term in the spirit, it means in union with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so in union with the Holy Spirit is like saying in partnership or in, uh, um, you know, sort of being yielded, submitted, surrendered to the Holy Spirit. So together with the Holy Spirit. So when we are uh, using that term in the spirit, we must recognize that the spirit that we are uh, referring to is the Holy Spirit. Right? The Holy Spirit, whom God has sent to dwell in every believer. So, does every believer have the Holy Spirit? Yes, that's the answer. So, when we are born again, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell on the inside of us. However, we find that um, uh, there is a separate experience known as baptism in the Holy Spirit. So, uh, when we as believers are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Bible teaches us that there are gifts of the Holy Spirit that get activated in us and we start to manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, tongues is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when this gift gets activated, which is after the baptism in the Holy Spirit, then uh, we have a prayer language. What is tongues? Tongues is essentially a prayer language, okay, a prayer language uh, which the believer can use uh, because there are many benefits of praying in tongues. Now, whenever we use the term praying in the spirit, what did I say earlier? When we use that uh, terminology in the spirit, we generally refer to <coughs> partnership with the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, and so when uh, Paul says, when Paul says that, you know, praying in the Spirit, he means praying in communion or partnership with the Holy Spirit. Now, there are questions. People say, how can you say that it is uh, praying in tongues? Praying in the Spirit can mean praying uh, powerfully or praying passionately or, you know, praying earnestly, isn't it? So praying in the spirit can mean all these things. But when we look at one particular passage, it's there in our notes. The first Corinthians chapter 14, verses 14 and 15, where Paul, he says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So he's commenting on praying in tongues. What is praying in tongues? When Paul is praying in tongues, his mind cannot understand. That's what he's saying. When I pray, 
in a tongue my mind is unfruitful meaning mind cannot understand now verse 15 he says what is the conclusion then i will pray with the spirit and i will also pray with the understanding so two separate ways of praying that he is mentioning here one is i will pray with the spirit so he already said in verse 14 that um when i pray with the spirit my understanding is unfruitful when i pray in tongues and then he he adds to that another kind of praying i will pray with my understanding meaning there is a prayer which we can pray which we can understand so which is in our own language which is in our own um you know uh, with our own words which our mind can grasp so quite clearly paul is talking about two different kinds of prayers so praying in tongues is not simply praying strongly or praying powerfully or passionately that's not exactly what it means because paul himself is saying that i will pray in the spirit which means i will pray in tongues and i will also pray with my understanding so i will pray two types of prayers one is i will pray in my language but i will also pray in tongues and what else does he say here he says when i pray in tongues i can't understand my mind is unfruitful okay so we've understood you know couple of things regarding tongues uh, now let's go on he he adds to that i will sing with the spirit and i will also sing with the understanding so same thing two distinctions when he's saying i can sing with my own words Uh, which are uh, you know uh, which i can comprehend but i can also sing in words that i can't understand so there are two separate ways of praying or two separate kinds of languages that a believer can engage with god in prayer so we'll you know go through and we'll discuss more things uh, now this in the spirit right in the spirit you would find in the writings of paul he uses that in the spirit by which he simply means praying in tongues okay as per paul's writings it is in the spirit or in tongues so ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 it is there in the notes can someone read it please you can use the mic yeah any one of you go ahead read praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to his end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints mm, very good thank you uh, reena so here paul had um, we saw this scripture earlier when we learned about the different kinds of prayers right and we said that uh, we must pray all prayer and here paul is adding supplication in the spirit in the spirit i already shared that in the spirit um, by that he means praying in a unknown tongue so that is also a kind of prayer which the believer can um, apply or work with now let's come to what is the importance or what is the benefit people ask the question why why did god give this language why You can pray no in english hindi and all our different languages why did god give us this kind of a language to pray there are many reasons okay and there are many benefits that we can see in the scripture regarding praying in tongues so let's try to understand that okay if you have any questions please feel free you can ask so let's first look at first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 First Corinthians fourteen verse two. Can anybody read it? You can turn in your Bibles and read it aloud. For he who speaks in the tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. Whoever in the spirit he speaks, my spirit. 
Mm, okay, thank you. Uh, so, whoever speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, right? And no one understands him. He speaks mysteries. Three things. One is, he who speaks in a tongue is speaking to whom? To God, not to people. So when we speak in tongues, our prayer language, that is why we call it prayer language. What is prayer? Speaking to God, isn't it? So that is why when we, uh, when he, one who speaks in tongues is speaking to God and not to men. Okay, point number one. Second, no one understands. So what is the meaning of that? When we pray in tongues, our mind cannot understand. What am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. What is the third thing? He speaks mysteries. Okay? He speaks mysteries. Mysteries. What, uh, in, what is that word in maybe Hindi? What does it say? Hindi? Huh? Okay, rahasya. Okay? Things that we cannot understand. Secrets. Isn't it? Secrets. So, uh, we are speaking some mysteries to God which we cannot grasp. So three things are very clear when we pray in tongues. So here is the importance of praying in tongues. See, when we are speaking mysteries, now you tell me, is anything a mystery for God? Is anything a mystery or a secret or rahasya? You can hide it from God. No, God knows everything. So when we are speaking mysteries, it's not a mystery for God, right? Then when Paul says we speak mysteries, who is it a mystery for? For us. So we are speaking things which are too big for us, you know, too great for us, too wonderful for us, which we can't even understand, right? It's not so amazing to God because he already knows everything. But when I speak in a tongue, I am speaking to God. Nobody understands me, but I am speaking mysteries to God. So what are these mysteries? Now, these are prayers beyond the limitation of my mind. You got it? Because my mind is only capable of praying prayers that I can grasp or understand. Like I may pray uh, for maybe five years. I can think of only five years ahead of my life what I might be doing. So, you know, I could pray, God, bless me with a house, you know, bless me with this, bless me with that, you know, do all this in my life. I can only think so much. But when I pray in tongues, I may be praying beyond those five years. I may be praying way into my future. I may be praying for my descendants. I may be praying for, you know, other people whom I don't know. Uh, I may be praying for things that God has called me to do that I still don't understand. Right? Now, uh, a young person may be praying. They may still be in school, but they may be praying for their career or their choice of, uh, you know, a, a life partner. So many prayers could actually be, it could be happening in those mysteries that we are speaking, but we don't know. It's beyond the limitation of our human thinking. So God thought it important to give us a language like that in which we can address matters beyond boundaries. Okay, so when we are speaking in tongues, initially we may not know what we are praying for, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are praying beyond boundaries. So many people also term praying in tongues is limitless. There's no limit when you're praying in the spirit because we may be praying for great and wonderful things, which right now, maybe our mind also cannot accept it. Did you understand? So praying in the spirit is important because the Holy Spirit helps us to pray for um, things in the future, things, things concerning other people, you know, things that God wants us to do, which we may not have the capacity to grasp right now. So uh, it's really beneficial because we can put all this in prayer to God without even knowing that we have prayed for these things. Okay, yes, yes.
Okay, good question. So, um, Akhil is saying, uh, then can we say that praying in tongues is more effective than praying with understanding, right? Uh, but I don't think so. There's no question of replacing one with the other. And that's why even Paul said, he said, I pray um, in the tongue and I also pray with my understanding. I pray in the spirit and I also pray with my understanding. So, I think praying in our own language also has its place. Right? So you can't replace it. It's not this or that. It's not like that. All of us, huh? Yeah. So, uh, okay. So that's uh, another thing, uh, uh, Akhil, which I don't think we can get into it uh, quite elaborately today. But I will recommend you this APC publication called as The Gifts of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit. You can check it up um, uh, in our resources. It, it has a section where we talk about how uh, the gifts are offered to all believers. So all believers can flow in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it is possible. So you can maybe read through that and then ask me more questions. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, in that case, in follow-up to what Akhil said, all of us can pray in tongues according to you know what the scripture tells us yes see without baptism means which baptism what a baptism okay yeah see becoming a believer uh, is the first thing right first you accept christ so what when you accept christ what is it in john chapter 3 verse 3 uh, jesus said that you must be born again Okay, born again is a spiritual experience. So when that spiritual experience happens, the, uh, even the book of Titus says that the Holy Spirit comes, the regenerative work of the Holy Spirit takes place inside. So Holy Spirit already comes. Now, the believer may be water baptized, may not be water baptized at that point. But the moment we are born again, Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside the believer. That's what the Bible says. Yeah, any, um, anything else? Or uh, we can move to the next benefit of praying in tongues. So we can pray beyond, without boundaries. So every day you can um, set aside some time to just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues, right? Now we don't know, we don't even know what we are praying for. But you will see the value of praying in tongues, maybe later in your life. Uh, at least I can testify to that. There are prayers I've prayed. I don't know what I've prayed. But when you commit time to praying in the spirit, the way things unfold in your life, you, you know, hey, God actually had me pray for these things way back. And now it's all happening in my life. Right? So uh, in this manner, God can actually lead us. So committing to pray uh, in tongues for a certain part of your prayer time or a certain part of the day. Just pick a time and say, I'm just going to pray in the spirit. And go on, just pray. Right? One hour, one and a half hours, two hours. Just pray in the spirit. Don't worry about, what am I praying? Don't worry about that. Because it's anyway mystery. So, there's, there's really, uh, you don't have to worry. But we'll see later on that the Holy Spirit can actually give us the interpretation also. So there are times that we pray in tongues, but we can even understand what we prayed for. Because Holy Spirit gives us the interpretation. Right? There is another gift of the Spirit known as the interpretation of tongues. So even that can operate and we can understand the meaning of some of the prayers which we are praying. But the important thing is to uh, recognize that, um, that it's a very precious prayer language. And you just have to use it. Okay? So when we pray, we pray beyond boundaries. Our prayer life becomes limitless. Maybe we are praying for the nation. We are praying for the city. We are praying for the lost. We don't know. But we are saying, okay, God, use me. I will pray. We are praying without boundaries, borders, limits. And, uh, um, you know, it, it's really powerful. The second uh, important thing about praying in tongues is, Oh, okay, there's a question. Um, okay. 
there are many questions so tongues cannot be understood by satan uh, so uh, uh, brother biju uh, you are you're asking tongues cannot be understood by satan um, i would say so because we just saw first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 right uh, where um, in this prayer language when we are praying to god uh, only god understands because he is the only one who knows everything now satan is a created being he is not like god he was first an angel and you know then he um, um, rebelled against god so he is limited he is not infinite so obviously he will not be able to understand the 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 prayers which we are speaking to god so that's my answer to your question tongues cannot be understood by satan that is right um next lucy is asking sister how do we um end prayers when praying in tongues abruptly mm. uh, i i didn't understand sister lucy because we wouldn't know right like abruptly meaning how do we pray how do we end prayers don't worry about that anyway we don't know what we are saying so <laughs> you can stop at any point it should be fine i guess just pray you know in reverence to god that's the most important thing so it should be fine because we wouldn't know which is actually the end or the middle of our prayer there now coming to uh, daniel uh, does holy spirit know what we pray if yes does he want us to pray when he knows what we are going to pray for okay so does the holy spirit know what we are praying for yes he knows hmm? why he wants us to pray okay see jesus also said right that um, i will not do uh, he will not do our praying for us intercession we've discussed about this that praying is a way for us to release our authority so it's a function that we have to um, engage in yes god knows many things but we have to pray so that's the design that he has given us so even if holy spirit knows he wants us to pray it through okay uh, and daniel many things we will discuss in the coming chapter so then it will give you a better understanding regarding this sure so even the holy spirit knows we would need to pray all right um fine so let me go to the next question i think as i cover the notes also you will have a better uh, grasp now the next point is we can pray according to the will of god now i said that we can pray mysteries right things that we don't know now uh, romans chapter 8 verse 26 and 27 maybe uh, will ask another person to read anyone else you finished reading you already read once no okay then read yeah read read likewise the spirit also helps in our weakness for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered now he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god okay very nice so here uh, it's quite clear that there are times that we don't know what to pray isn't it what decision to make what to ask god in the given circumstance we don't even know so in those moments what does the scripture say uh, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered then it says now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god so there are times in our lives where we don't know what is the right request that we must ask god but at that time who do you think knows what is the right request holy spirit because he knows the mind of god he understands what god is thinking 
and with god's wisdom only he knows you know what we are supposed to pray right so the holy spirit helps us to make intercession how it says according to the will of god so when i don't know what to pray some of the best prayers that i can pray is just pray in tongues that's all why because whatever i pray what does it say how does the holy spirit guide us to pray according to the will of god so if i pray in tongues 100% what i prayed is like you know they say like right, pakka pakka prayer because it is in the will of god it is in the heart of god for me it is according to the purposes of god for my life it cannot go wrong so it is in the will of god when we pray in the spirit so that is another benefit let's say i spend 5 um uh, one minute praying in the spirit that's a perfect prayer even though i prayed how much how long did i pray only one minute it is a perfect prayer because tongues is always in the will of god the holy spirit helps us pray according to the will of god now maybe i prayed for 10 minutes perfect prayers 10 minutes perfect prayers because my mind is not involved in it i don't even know what i'm asking for but holy spirit according to the mind of god is helping me to pray those prayers now i may pray for one hour even more powerful why every word i said everything i prayed is 100% in the will of god so you see that is another benefit i am praying firstly i said i am praying for things which i cannot even understand second i am praying perfect prayers or prayers in the will of god and so nothing that i say will contradict or be opposite right to what god wants uh for my life so that is another advantage of praying in the spirit so i'll quickly come to the questions um so bless is asking when we started praying in tongues after some time we pause and pray in our own language it feels like something is missing why is it happening okay uh maybe the spirit wants you to continue praying in tongues maybe i don't know but yeah you can if you feel like uh, when you stop uh, something is missing then you just pray more in in tongues and you come back to your language maybe much later okay but nothing wrong in praying in our own language also we can also pray in our own languages right so you you try to do that then um okay when we start with tongues should we end with tongues so there is no such rule uh blessy okay you can pray whichever way you like you can um pray in english and close praying in tongues or you can start praying in tongues and then go into praying in english language or your own language so it should be fine or you can pray in between you can even alternate pray a little bit own language little bit tongues so there's no such rule you can just pray how you wish then uh, next one here when we are praying in the spirit we feel we are repeating a few words is it fine okay i think that um, a lot of people wonder about that i'm saying the same words why do you worry anyway you don't know what you're saying how do we know that you know god it could be that with the same word there is so much expressed to god we don't know right we don't know anything about that tongues language so uh, don't worry even if we are saying only one word you you could be communicating pages or books of information to god and god could be communicating books of information into your spirit let god do what he wants to do right we cannot un- try to understand everything because we cannot understand that's why he said okay don't worry about it right whatever you can understand you pray in your in your language what you cannot understand you pray in the spirit so sister i hope my answer is uh, fine with you uh, yeah we don't know it may be a few words but the information can be different each time or um, you know it, it the it can be a large um, chunk of information so we'll just let um, god do his thing uh show sure. let's question
Okay. Um, interpretation of tongues and different kinds of tongues. How do you distinguish? Fine. So tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Interpretation of tongues is also another gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So both of these are operational. Um, like you, you would, if, when you read that book, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you'll have an idea how they actually begin to operate. So the point is, each gift is for the right time. Understood? So when I pray in tongues, um, every time I may not need an interpretation. For example, in personal prayer language, when we pray, sometimes we can ask God. We may want or desire and say, God, I want to know what I prayed for. Then the interpretation comes. Got it? But uh, every time that may not be the case. Most of the time you may just pray and then it, it doesn't, uh, um, you know, like you can't grasp what you prayed for. And the second thing you said, kinds of tongues, right? So there are uh, tongues um, which, like we'll talk about a variety of them. So one is this prayer language. The other is known as tongues as a sign. And that we won't discuss today. Tongues as a sign is what happened in Acts chapter 2. So when people started praying in tongues, uh, others were hearing them in their own human languages. Right? So that's a different kind of tongues. Then there is one more, tongues as a message. So when we, when we speak tongues as a message, you need an interpreter. For example, I can't come here in your class and just start talking to you in tongues. You won't understand anything that I'm saying. So if it's a message to the people, then I need an interpreter. I'll say the message, they'll interpret. They'll operate in the gift of the, um, you know, uh, interpretation of tongues. I'll operate in the gift of tongues. So there are all these categories. But what we are talking about in today's class is tongues as a prayer language. Okay? We are clear? Fine. Great. So um, let's go on. Okay, lots of questions. I don't think my, my uh, vehicle will move today. I'm stuck at point two. Okay, coming to the next question here. Uh, what happens if we pray for something and without getting those things, we died? Okay. What about God's promises? Asked, I'll fulfill your desire. Hmm. Okay, Vicky. Uh, so when something like this happens, you know, we've prayed and it was God's promise. Uh, but let's say it never got fulfilled. There can be so many reasons for why such a thing happened. Isn't it? Uh, but one thing for sure is that it's not like God did not want it to happen. It's not like that. But there may be other factors like faith, like obedience, so many things which may not have aligned so that that promise can be fulfilled, right? But it's not just these two reasons. There can be many, many more reasons. And sometimes we may never get a reason. We can ask God, God, why did this happen? Why did this happen? God says, okay, I don't need to tell you. Right? So we want to find out everything. You have to tell me. God says, no, I don't want to tell you. So then what will we do? Sometimes we may not know the reason because uh, God may not think it necessary to tell us what exactly went wrong, right? But we should be okay to not know everything. Is, is that fine, Vicky? So you can let me know if you're uh, okay with that. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, um, so bless you saying uh, when we are praying in tongues in the group, there is a lot of difference between one and another person's tongues. Why? Uh, but language is one. Why are the words different? Okay. See, uh, again, bless you, it's very hard to tell because we don't even know anything about this language. We are just following the way Holy Spirit is guiding us. Uh, so, again, I would say don't worry about it. Let anybody speak however they like. Uh, we should just concentrate on you know, fellowshipping with God and especially, you know, we'll see later when we pray in tongues, the other gifts of the Holy Spirit start getting activated. So when we are praying in tongues, 
even when we when we are praying in tongues we may feel like you know we are we are receiving from god different things even uh, prophecy words will come to us uh, pictures will come to us so focus on all that don't worry which words other person is saying because even if we focus we can't do anything about that is that fine okay great okay uh praying in tongues without experience okay so um cyril when you're saying praying in tongues without experience you mean uh, uh like you know some people feel hot some people feel like a uh, presence of god manifesting in a different way yeah it's okay see all the time we won't feel uh, we won't have that experience of the presence of god the same way right uh, but don't worry about that sometimes you'll have the manifestation sometimes you won't have but praying in tongues is a discipline the way you do your normal prayer do you feel something to start praying not really we anyway pray even praying in tongues you can do like that don't wait for an experience okay great all right um sure so we we've, we've looked at two benefits we said we can pray for many things then we said that we can pray in the will of god now let's look at the next one in verse 26 of romans 8 which we read it says spirit helps in our weakness okay spirit helps in our weakness we don't know what to pray for then he helps us pray uh, according to the will of god that we saw in verse 27 so when we pray in tongues what happens is that some of the weaknesses which we have in ourselves all those weaknesses will start leaving okay, when john the baptist he introduced jesus he said jesus behold the lamb of god okay uh, and then he said uh, jesus he will come after me he will baptize you in holy spirit and in fire you remember that that's what john said about jesus Jesus will baptize you in holy spirit and fire. Now tell me what is the work of fire? If I bring some fire, you know I keep some, you know, dust, some leaves, some paper, everything, put the fire. What will happen? It will burn up. Anything that is light, anything that is um uh, you know, unnecessary, the fire will burn up. So what did John the Baptist say? Jesus will baptize you with holy spirit that we understand baptism in the holy spirit activate the gifts of the holy spirit within us and fire so the way the fire burns up all the unnecessary things when we experience the baptism in the holy spirit and even praying in tongues what happens is it's like a fire there are there could be some unnecessary attitudes in in my heart there can be some unnecessary imaginations unnecessary habits right so many weaknesses as we saw romans 8:26 the spirit helps us in our weakness so i want to become a strong believer i want to follow jesus i don't want anything to hinder me one thing that i can do is pray in tongues why right? what are we doing we are becoming stronger weaknesses are being burnt up on the inside right so that is another advantage so when i'm praying i'm speaking to god um you know i'm praying in the will of god but i'm becoming stronger if we want our spirit man to become strong how to do it put the word pray in tongues why because of these reasons it will make you so strong all your all our weaknesses we can deal with it when we are praying in the spirit okay so that is another benefit of praying in tongues it will help us overcome the weaknesses of our flesh now moving on what is the next benefit when we pray in tongues it will build us up spiritually and i already mentioned that so in first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4 um paul says he who speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself edify that word edify it means strengthen 
so when we pray in tongues what happens we strengthen ourselves okay uh, and that is why we have to spend time praying in tongues now there are other scriptures here uh, maybe we can read them quickly and then i'll move on to the next point so jude 1 verse 20 uh, can we pass the mic another person anyone else would like to read it's in the notes jude 120 please pass it that's it but you below building you say you say slave up on your most holy faith praying in your holy spirit okay so it says building yourselves up on your most holy faith how to build yourself up go to the gym <laughs> yeah spiritual spiritual building up how to build ourselves up spirit man okay we want to build the spirit man what is it telling us to do you want to develop some muscles in your spirit man <laughs> so what to do pray and dance so that's what i'm trying to tell us we want our spirit man to become stronger and stronger pray in the spirit that's what jude is saying building yourselves up on your most holy faith praying in the spirit okay so that is the way in which we can strengthen ourselves now ephesians 3 and verse 16 one more uh, verses there in in the explanation in the paragraph there is another verse okay let me read that for you don't want any confusion so ephesians 3 and verse 16 it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man so the bible tells us there is an inner man we have to take care of the inner man also that is our spirit man make the spirit man very very strong and that can be done through praying in tongues <coughs> sorry okay now um we are also told that we can keep ourselves in the love of god which means that to continue to love god to continue to love people when we pray in the holy spirit it helps us right to do this to love god and to love people it's in the same passage jude 1 verse 20 and verse 21 um would somebody like to read it yeah but you believe building joseph up on your most holy faith praying in your in the holy spirit keep yourself in the love of god looking for the mercy of our lord jesus christ into eternal life okay so building yourselves up on your most holy faith we discussed about it but it also says keeping yourselves in the love of god so when we pray in the spirit it will help us to um you know with that character of christ to be able to love others and to love god that can also be developed within us when we pray in the spirit uh, now the next important reason why one must pray in the spirit is it brings rest and refreshing um so i'll read this isaiah 28 verse 11 and 12 says for with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to his to this people to whom he said this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear so my question to us is when we become very tired what do we do take rest okay take rest uh, maybe get some sleep uh, and then you feel better because what have you done you have just refreshed yourself you refreshed your strength you refreshed your body now spiritually when i may feel tired what should i do that's what it says rest and refreshing rest and refreshing as at 28 god has promised rest and refreshing uh, through tongues okay through another tongue uh, he will speak to the people so 
when we pray in tongues it will also refresh our spiritual man sometimes you wonder right like uh, um uh, i heard somebody say this that when they do ministry sometimes ministry can be so busy because you have to do this you have to do that you have to go you know preach here preach there do so many things we know how to take a physical rest what about my spirit man you know if my spirit man is feeling weary so they were telling that um, what they do is just take some time to pray in tongues then what's happening you're actually refreshing your spirit man as well we refresh our body but even the spirit man is renewed and refreshed you find rest when you pray in tongues so sometimes you may just want a spiritual rest and for that you can pray in the spirit okay so all these wonderful benefits are packed within praying in tongues so i think i'll just stop here because we have just about 4 minutes left so if there's any clarifications uh, i can attempt to uh, help you out and uh, yeah we will wrap up for today so um, when i uh, got baptized in the holy spirit and i started speaking in tongues i didn't know anything about it i got the gift but then i never used it never used it uh, so i think uh, i was baptized like as a child i started praying in tongues when we went for one prayer but i never used it because i did not know the benefits of praying in the spirit but it's only when i was in college in one of the youth group meetings they taught us about the value of speaking in tongues and they said it's a prayer language you have to decide that every day you will pray in tongues so do that and i'm so grateful for what i was taught because till that day when i go for a prayer or church service little bit i'll speak and i'll stop but after that i started making it a habit daily you know, to just pray in the spirit pray in tongues uh, and uh, yeah so there are many benefits that each one of us can actually experience from it okay so let me just stop here we'll pray and close uh, let's come back in the next class and uh, discuss more there's some more uh, points that i could not cover so uh, i'll just leave the time open if anybody wants to pray you can pray please either here in the class or online anyone can pray would like to pray Amen thank you so much thank you everyone god bless you and uh, yeah we'll meet again in the next class